On the 27th day of October, Halloween gave to me 27 maggot squirming, 26 phone booth lunches, 25 cotton candy cocoons, 24 space vampire snogging, 23 bloody canoes, 22 pull corpses, 21 groovy ashes, 20 Japanese giallos, 19 kung fu vampires, 18 haunted marches, 17 eternal lonelinesses, 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Betty's baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 goldwind shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome to uh, another of the 31 Days of Halloween, number 27 by my count, which means we only have four movies to go uh, after today. But let us not spend our time looking ahead. Remember, the future is not guaranteed. The, the past is behind us. And today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. So <laughs> anyway, we are talking about Dario Argento's Phenomena also known as Creepers, depending on which cut you saw. And I actually um, uh, saw it as Creepers originally, um, which, okay, so, you know, we talked earlier in the uh, the series, the 31 Days of Halloween series, um, about how uh, all of these movies kind of fall into one of three categories. There's the movies I've never seen before, there are movies I haven't seen in a long time, and movies that I just dearly love. And Phenomena is one of those that I hadn't seen in a long time, and, and it was one of the movies I knew early on I was going to do for this series this year, because I had such a weird memory of this movie, and it turns out that that weird memory was pretty accurate for this film, but I wanted to go back and revisit it, partly because I've sort of rediscovered or discovered perhaps uh my my interest and in, in, in affection for giallo films and italian uh horror cinema in a larger sense and i wanted to see some of argento's later work because i've really grown to find that i adore tenebrae tenebrae is maybe one of my favorite horror movies now um and there was a time i would have told you I would, I would be crazy for saying something like that. Uh, so that's, you know, one of the reasons I want to revisit this. And also just because it's such an oddball kind of film in that, you know, it's got a young Jennifer Connelly uh, in the movie, um, which seems strange to me to have this sort of young American actress in this, you know, clearly Italian movie that's got other performers like... You know, uh, what's her name? Dar Daria Nicolodi um, and uh, Donald Pleasant shows up in this and Fiore Argento. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a, a steeped Italian cast with a couple of American and, and British actors. And at the time, Jennifer Connelly uh, hadn't really done that much. Um, this is only her second a uh, film uh, she was in Once Upon a Time in America, but in, in like a year from this movie, she would show up in Labyrinth and would become like an honest to goodness star, um, or or certainly a, an actor of note. And then you know later on she would do, you know, uh, uh, career opportunities and higher learning. Career opportunities is the one you know where you have the gif of uh, her and her breasts. Uh, which is one of the probably most downloaded images and and gifs uh, in the history of the internet. I would I would argue, I would imagine. And uh, anyway, it's to speak nothing more of that. Like she's a, a young girl in this, so we're not going to sexualize this any more than Argento has. Although he seems to really enjoy uh, both you know, Fiore Argento and Jennifer Connelly in nightgowns. Um, so, you know, you be the judge. Is Dario Argento a little bit of a pervert? Uh, probably. That's probably true. Uh, you know, whether it's murdering his wife on screen in a number of gory ways, uh, or, 
uh, you know, uh, kind of sexualizing his children, then, you know, yeah, Argento uh, marches the beat of his own drum, I suppose. Anyway, what is the the premise of, of Creepers? The, the idea of Creepers slash Phenomenon is that Jennifer Connelly is going to this boarding school. Her, her father is a famous actor. I think it was supposed to be like Pacino or De Niro or somebody. And they were going to use that name. And, and the actor's people reached out and said like, uh, you can't really do that because A, uh, he doesn't really have a daughter and doesn't want to be name checked in this movie about a girl what could control bugs with her mind. <laughs> so, you know. Um, there's that, but, uh, so anyway, she goes to this, this boarding school and there are, uh, murders occurring, uh, in and around the, the school. And, uh, she ends up, you know, clearly has these kind of psychic powers. She, she does the, this kind of sleepwalking, which leads her into harm's way also allows her to find, um, Donald Pleasance, who is uh, an investigator uh, who works with uh, bugs, but also uh, has a monkey sidekick, which is is pretty fun. And uh, we, did, you know, through, through Donald Pleasance, we discover that Jennifer Connelly has an ability to communicate with insects. Um, that she finds them like, to be her friends. You know, she can kind of read. Uh, the the their feelings and they respond to her emotions and, and feelings and so that is kind of the bizarre premise of the film and she uses this ability to sort of track down her missing friend from the boarding school who who goes missing and and discovers that um, she's been killed and which makes her the target of the killer and in typical giallo fashion um, it goes to some weird places uh, in, in terms of uh, what the ultimate reveal is. There's a hint of, uh, like, don't look now in this movie a little bit, but it's also dealing with some of the, you know, more giallo trappings of, you know, this elaborate murder mystery and these elaborate staged death scenes that Argento is known for, but this is 85, right? This is past, you know, Suspiria and Tenebrae and Deep Red and, you know, uh, or if you're Italian, the Profundo Rossi, uh, which I think is a, a terrific name for a movie. Um, and it's really, um, you know, indicative of where Argento was at this stage in his career. Um, in some ways, he is parodying himself uh, or parroting himself and that's not necessarily bad it's I, I, I'm so conflicted about phenomena is you know you, you can probably hear that in my voice because on the one hand I love the fact that it's so bizarre um, it's such a weird film um, it you know with these disparate elements of you know you have this giallo film happening but also this strange you know girl like psychic girl kind of carrie-esque uh sort of thing only she has a telepathy with insects and then that's those two things kind of sit alongside one another and it's good but it it is also never not distractingly weird at times and by the time you get to the end of it when all of a sudden you're not only having the the deal with like the bug control and then here's this giallo killer slash mutant that you're dealing with also this crazy monkey shows back up it's just one of those things where it feels like it might be just a little bit too much that that maybe we are uh, uh putting a hat on a hat on a hat and that we've reached a place in the in the film where you just need to pump the brakes a little bit. Um, but you know, it it is what it is. I, I I really enjoy the movie, and it's really unusual. But I can't 
quite get past the fact that it it is such an oddity and maybe I just need to watch it four or five or six dozen more times so that the 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 weirdness of it uh, you know fades so that I can concentrate more on on how the movie is doing its thing. Um, but it I, I get too distracted by it. I, I am just constantly uh, like beset watching this movie by these feelings of like, okay, so what's going on now and why did they make this decision? It's not the wrong decision. It's just a deeply weird decision. And I don't understand exactly how you get, I know, like I know Argento ha had some inspirations for this movie, um, but it just seems so strange. And, and it could be a cultural thing too of, you know, the, the supernatural and giallo films seem distinct to me in some ways that, you know, Suspiria is not giallo, right? Like super uh, Suspiria is a supernatural horror film. Inferno is a supernatural horror film. Tenebrae is a giallo. And it feels like, like you got my chocolate in your peanut butter kind of situation with phenomena where it's like, you got my giallo in your supernatural horror film. And I don't know which of these things is, is the dominant force or if they're equal to one another in the narrative then I, I just don't think that entirely works. But also, it is fascinating. And, you know, we've talked a couple of times in this run of movies, whether it's, you know, Rigor Mortis or Evil Dead 2, of the idea of blending genres or blending modes of, of storytelling. And I, I think this is a movie that does that. It does that blending of modes. And I don't know that it works super well but again, I can't look away from it. It's it's just bizarre. Um, but it's also a really good Halloween movie. Like one of the things that I took away from the viewing of this movie is that it does have this really uncanny kind of quality, and it and it's a lot of fun to watch because it is so strange, and because it's Argento, you know, the moments of violence are kind of beautiful. Uh, the animated insects maybe are a little chintzy, uh, but then again, how do you do it, right? Like, how do you in in 1985 when there is no such thing as CGI? Uh, how do you make this movie with a bunch of insects that you need to perform on demand in a world in which insects do not do that because they don't have the kinds of, of brains that allow for training at that level and so forth? So. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like a bold movie to even attempt, you know, it's like when the, the Russian judges score you because uh, high because of the degree of difficulty of the, the dive that you're attempting. And I'm a believer that, uh, you definitely get points for that, for audacity, if nothing else. And I, I think that's, uh, you know, something to, to be admired. And Argento is nothing if not daring. And I really admire that about him. Uh, and I think Phenomena, like Creepers uh, was the American cut of, and then Phenomena is the... It, I think it's hard to get your hands on Creepers now, but at the time I saw it when it was on cable or whatever, it had been cut. Uh, but like I said, I could not tell you the differences between the two films because I saw it when I was, you know, 12 years old and thought, what a weird movie. And then I saw it, you know, a couple of days ago and thought, what a weird movie. <laughs> so I don't know that it's changed, but my appreciation of it is different. Uh, so, eh, you know, wh wh what else to say about Phenomenon other than this is a strange, strange movie that I think only Dario Argento could have done. You know, may maybe, maybe uh, Suave maybe um, definitely not Fulci because it's just not goopy enough for Fulci although it does have some you know maggoty corpses and whatnot there's plenty of maggot a action in Phenomena so if you're saying to yourself on this cool crisp October night I need some maggot action then let me introduce you to Phenomena which you can uh, find on a number of streaming services and is in uh, it's easy to get now 
I remember when I first saw it as Creepers. Maybe it wasn't on cable. I think I rented it from Camera World, which was the the video store um, that we had when I was a kid. And the thing that was great about Camera World is that they would send out a catalog of all the movies that they had. And they, they were one of the bigger VHS rental places in town. They would rent you the VCR. This is back in the days when, you know, people didn't really have VCRs. Or, or they were still a relatively new technology. So you could rent the VCR along with some movies and just, you know, take it for a test spin. I think the first movie I ever rented was Star Trek 3? Something like that. But anyway, um, <laughs> the VHS uh, rental place put out a catalog and it would give you the uh, brief synopsis of the movie, the name of the movie, a brief synopsis, and you know, a little bit of edi editorializing here and there. Like I, I remember seeing um, Evil Dead because the the catalog said that it was one of the goriest movies ever made. And I was like, well, I got to see that then. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, yes, partly true that it is very gory, but also, holy crap, that movie scared me to death. Um, and Creepers was one of those that I got just because it sounded so strange and it was a horror movie and they had it. And that was the trifecta. Is it a horror movie? Is it in stock? Is it something that appeals to me in any way? You know, like I, I would tend to avoid slashers and that kind of thing um, when I was a kid just because I felt like, you know, you'd seen one, you'd seen them all. You kind of knew the basic beats of it. Where a movie like this kind of stuck in my head. Like I'm, I'm sure I saw a hundred slashers when I was a kid that I could not tell you the name of. I could absolutely tell you about Creepers, at least the basic beats, because it was so strange and so so audacious and, and so weird and wonderful. And w looking back at it now um, as phenomenon and, and reappraising it, uh, I do really enjoy it. Like I said, it, it, it just, it's hard for me to fully digest. You know, it, it is a big meal with a lot of spice. And I don't know if it is entirely palatable, but I really enjoy it for the most part. Um, and Donald Pleasance is always fun. He's really weird. And, and again, he's got a monkey pal. And how do you not enjoy Donald Pleasance and his monkey pal? It's like uh, proto monkey shines in some ways. And yeah, and also Jennifer Connelly is actually very good in it. And as you watch her, you can easily see like, oh yeah, she's going to be a star. She is a very good young actress and turned into a very good actor and as time went on. So, uh, all right. I think that's enough about phenomena. You, if you've never seen it, you should absolutely see it. It's, it's a super weird movie and I would love to get your thoughts on it, which you can do ladies and jelly spoons, uh, by hopping over to our discord server. Uh, if you would like to do so, remember that you can, uh, dial this up on legionpodcast.com this here post and on the post uh, there will be links to uh, all of the social media channels for Legion Podcast one of those is the uh, Discord server uh, which I uh, I frequent on the daily uh, for the most part uh, you know every now and again you got a day where you just don't have time but uh, most of the time I'm hanging out there and uh, so I encourage you to drop by and, and let me know what uh, how you fared with creepers and or phenomena. And I would be curious to hear about that. Uh, so uh, please do so. Also, depending on which uh, podcast feed you're listening to, it might be the dark parade. And if it's the dark parade, then please make sure you are subscribing to the Legion podcast uh, podcast feed. If it is uh, the po Legion podcast feed, um, you can find more out of me and more of the shenanigans that I get up to on the weekly Um over on the dark parade so just find that on the podcast catcher of your choice or uh, again go to legionpodcast.com and you can uh, find links to um, the podcast feed on any of the dark parade posts so uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me as we talk about bugs and Jennifer Connelly and maybe Dario Argento being a little bit of a creep uh, it has been a special time that I've spent with all of you and now, uh, sadly, we put day 27 in the books and get to our final stretch of movies. We've got four movies that are kind of a mini theme leading up to our final movie. So uh, here we go, folks. Uh, this is it. The last four days. I hope you're enjoying 
uh, the Halloween season. I know I certainly am. I really appreciate you guys listening to this and, and reaching out to me about the movies and all that stuff. Uh, we'll do it again next year, of course. Uh, but for now, be spooky out there, and I will see you tomorrow for day 28 of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then.